Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono Black. What is going on, everybody? Here at It Resolves, we like to have fun, try different decks, and hopefully learn a little something along the way. Today, we are playing with Mono Black, guys. This is the new mid-range version of the list. Now, I will just say this. There are a lot, a lot of flexibility slots in this deck. There's a lot of different versions floating around. I don't know what the best version is yet by any means, but this is the version I am gonna try out today and I am sure we will take a peek at some other ones down the line. Uh, what we do have here are a lot of really strong new additions, which is really what I wanna talk about. Most of you probably know most of how mono black midrange works at this point, uh, but some new additions, like I said, first and foremost, go for the throat. Phenomenal removal. Uh, hits most things. Obviously, non-artifact creature is the only stipulation here. Uh, but it's, for the most part, going to be an upgrade over Infernal Grasp. Now, Infernal Grasp obviously does hit artifact creatures, which is nice. Uh, and so to have the split is good. But I do lean a little bit more towards the go for the throat. Because I do think it's probably just a more efficient one. You don't lose two life in the process. Both being two mana instant speed, phenomenal. Uh, another nice little addition here is Misery Shadow. Kind of an interesting card. I'm I'm a bit at a loss here. We'll talk about why uh, when we get into the games, but basically I'll just say it's hard to pick sometimes between which one of these needs to get played on turn two, uh, either the Underdog or the Shadow. But Misery Shadow, a nice little 2-2 two -two for two. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it. That's actually really good. If you think about cards like Kami of Transients, that's not a card that you really have a great way to deal with a lot of the time because you mostly just point and shoot, remove it. Uh, this allows you the opportunity to exile it, which just means that uh, it's not gonna come back, right? It's gonna be a safely just gone card. Anytime uh, you've got one of the, the big dragon spirits from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, you exile it, that's always helpful. So there's a lot of benefit here, but on top of that, you can pay one of any color and it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn which just means that you can do a lot of damage. I think in a practice game, I've only done like two or three practice games. I got it up to like an 8-8 eight eight in one turn and just like annihilated the opponent. It was awesome. Uh, another new card here is Gix, Yogmoth Praetor. I have only a two of here. I know some are kind of varying this. Some go down to one, some have up to three or four, I know. Uh, but whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller can pay a life, and if they do, you draw a card. Very, very good. You can also pay four and three black, discard X cards. Exile the top X cards of target opponent's library. You can play lands and cast spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. So kind of an interesting one for sure. Uh, we also have the Liliana of the Veil. One thing to notice here, and there's actually a couple kind of nonbo pieces, uh, that final ability on Gix, probably not going to get used very often, but it doesn't actually work so all that well with Liliana because we're discarding cards from our hand in this process as well. So we a lot of times won't have many cards in hand to actually utilize this ability. Another little piece here, Misery Shadow and Graveyard Trespasser. Graveyard Trespasser, obviously a tried and true classic don't really work super well together for the most part. Uh, but uh, that being said, you can kind of pick and choose which way you want to go. Uh, the final new card is Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Uh, an amazing card. Obviously, if you can get it out for that seven mana, most of the often you probably won't, but if you do, uh, it's a giant 7-5 with Menace, lifelink, and then a ward cost, uh, basically saying if the opponent wants to target it, you're gonna have to lose seven, <laughs> which is pretty big. Uh, alternatively though, and probably more often, we're gonna be playing it for a 3-3 with the same abilities uh, for only three mana, which is also nice. We do get to trim up on lands down to 23 in a deck like this because we're really topping out at four, and then the Gix activation, as well as the Flesh Gorger, are kind of bonus opportunities, right? We don't necessarily need them to win the game. Uh, and so they're they're really like, if we get there, great. If we don't, it's cool too. Uh, but that is the new mono black that we're gonna be running. We do, of course, have two Mishra's Foundries here as well. I'm excited, guys. I think mono black has a lot more tools. I know a lot of people are, you either love or you hate mono black, probably depending on if you've been against it recently. That being said, uh, it obviously got some new tools. And so we have to try it out here on the channel and I'm really stoked for that. So let's jump into game one guys let's see what we can do let's have some fun all right guys here we are for game number one and this is a relatively strong keep i think uh we've got a nice one two into three we've doubled up on the lily as well so 
that should give us a little bit of flexibility. I'm kind of curious to see what we end up up against here. Uh, for the record, just some things I've been noticing. Mono Red is running rampant right now. As expected, anytime you get a new set into a format, a lot of times Mono Red sneaks to the top for the first, you know, week or two. Any aggro deck really is going to be at its best because people are still trying to figure out the format, right? And you can take advantage of that as the aggressive deck to just be able to sneak out wins all the time because people are trying to do cool stuff. Uh, we are going to lean more towards trying to do cool stuff later on, but uh, for now, uh, I'm excited to see what we can do. I do have um, another deck on the docket probably for tomorrow. And I'm so stoked about this deck, guys. Uh, John actually sent it to me, and I cannot wait to try it out. So, John, thank you, my man. Really do appreciate it. Uh, go hang out with John on live stream, by the way. He's going to be, I think, focusing more on some new video content here soon, uh, which is just kind of cool. It's something to, to try out. I'm actually going to go this route. Uh, and let's just... Let's just go up here, get some damage in, get some permanent uh, benefits on this versus the temporary benefits on the shadow. But at this point now, we have got some amazing power on the field, so they're going to have to pull the trigger on something, right? Um, but all that to say, guys, uh, John is still doing live streams, but I think he's trimming that down a little bit and instead going to be focusing on some video content. We've also got some really fun challenge ideas uh, where he and I are going to be kind of facing off against each other. I'm really excited for those opportunities. We got to do some, some fleshing out of that idea a little bit more before we can just jump right in. Uh, but I am really stoked about it. Also, guys, if you happen to be in the US, obviously this upcoming week is Thanksgiving week. Not only that, but we are also giving away our draft booster box of the brand new set so if that's something you are interested in uh certainly feel free to subscribe to the channel that is how you enter there's a couple other ways as well of course so do keep that in mind but i'm really really stoked for this set i think it's a great one uh and it's been really fun so far uh this actually worked out beautifully so we can kind of just lean on the lily to start discarding cards if we would like uh or we just have go for the throat backup right like Kind of in an okay spot no matter what. That's fine. Uh, not overly concerned by that. Uh, let's go ahead and go for the throat. Don't really see a reason not to uh, at this point. We will make us each discard a card. I'm going to discard the swamp, anticipating that we might need to just play the other lily at some point. Uh, and at this point, we have a bit of a decision to make. Do we go for the more damage route uh, on the shadow? Uh, to get up to five damage in or do we again kind of work towards building up the evolved sleeper for next turn? I kind of think we just go for the shadow play honestly uh, So let's go ahead and activate this a handful of times Perfect we could have hedged a little bit and gone for at least one activation on the sleeper But I actually like this plan better now. They're down to three, right? So we've gotten as much damage as we can get in we've got a backup Liliana uh, So we can make them if they play two creatures We can make them sack one and then bring in the other Lily to make them sack the other Which should put us in a position where we can just immediately win uh, unless they have some kind of like dealing with both creatures somehow. That would be kind of the biggest thing I can think of. Uh, we also, I mean, you're seeing this Misery Shadow do some work. Not that they necessarily have a lot of recursion in this Azorius Soldier's deck, but uh, the, uh, the Misery Shadow just being able to exile these creatures is very helpful. It just means we don't have to worry about it again, right? And maybe it's the Bant version. Uh, maybe it's the version we played. That's fine. Uh, that doesn't matter really at all. Uh, and there we go. We got the win. That was beautiful, guys. We did it. That was awesome. Uh, phenomenal start, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into a game, too. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you that we send out altars every single month to participating Patreon members. Now, please don't feel pressured, of course, but if you are interested in supporting the channel and picking up some awesome altars every single month, you can check out all the details over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. This month's to honor some of the most impactful lands we have ever seen in Magic, we have got the Urza Legendary Land Cycle, including Sarah's Sanctum, Talarian Academy, Phyrexian Tower, and Gaia's Cradle. If you're interested in picking these up, they will be available through the month of November and will be sent to you at the end of the month. 
As always, guys, we really appreciate the support, and thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and again, a very strong start. We've got a nice one into the Infernal Grasp, and then, of course, our option here of either Graveyard Trespasser or Lily. Uh, we'll see what we need in that time, but this is definitely a good start. Cult Conscript is a nice little card that I've I've really enjoyed playing with in the mono black decks. It just allows you the opportunity for a little bit of recursion, and sometimes that's all you need to win a game, right? Like, it's not... It's not that powerful, but for two mana, being able to bring it back, like, sure, I'll take it. Uh, and we'll see what the opponent is up to as well. Guys, also, I just want to say, I hope everybody's having a really nice weekend. I know uh, there's a lot of things going on right now in the, the magic community. <laughs> Generally, as a, as a channel, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say kind of up front, as a channel, we try to be very, like, positive outlook, right? Like... Our goal is not to, you know, cause issues, be divisive, do anything like that. That's not the goal of It Resolves. It Resolves is here to have fun, play new decks, and just enjoy the game. That's all we care to do. Uh, thankfully, we maintain that for the most part pretty well. Uh, the podcast at one time, like the Glorious Sunrise podcast, where John and I would kind of discuss but more major, like, high-end issues of the game, that was kind of our outlet for getting some of that information out and doing a little bit more in that regard. Obviously, that's not going on right now. Uh, we do have plans to bring it back, but uh, for now, that's not really a thing. Um, and so we don't really have a platform to discuss things like this 30th anniversary, uh, the Hasbro stock really dipping, like all kinds of big things uh, regarding Magic the Gathering that, I mean, to say it frankly, is just not necessarily ideal. <laughs> Uh, we're all aware, John and I have talked about it, we're very aware of everything that's going on, of course. Uh, maybe not every single detail, but we do keep up with it. And I'm sure, I am very positive that you guys watching have some opinion on what's been going on. Uh, and potentially, maybe even a very strong opinion on what the right answer is to move forward, or what Wizards needs to do, uh, or Magic the Gathering needs to do to kind of not save the game, I think that sounds a bit dramatic, but definitely improve uh, where we're at right now because certainly it's not necessarily in the best place. Um, we're aware of all that. What I will say is um, our goal, as I said at the beginning, is to maintain that positivity, and I still love the game. Speaking personally, it's still a fun game. Uh, and from that perspective, I am going to continue playing this very fun game, and hopefully you guys can continue to enjoy it as well. If you don't, totally understand. I get where you're coming from. I don't agree with every decision <laughs> uh, that, that uh, has been made. Um, and I know John is in the same boat, though I won't speak for him. Uh, and so we are just doing our best to enjoy the game, have fun with it, and uh, and enjoy what I think, I mean, truthfully, for the sake of all the negative stuff going on right now, the Brothers War, to me, is a bit of a saving grace. It's a beautiful set. It's a really fun set. And from that perspective, I'm kind of happy with it. Uh, and so while, of course, it's not perfect, and uh, certainly it could be a lot better in a million different ways, um, I'm not that that upset by it uh, because to me it's still just a fun game uh, and hopefully you guys can can enjoy it too but all that to say guys we are going to blow up this tovalar we're going to attack him for five we're going to get a uh, sixth point of damage in thanks to the uh, graveyard trespasser and hopefully they don't have just like a reckless storm seeker that would be maybe the worst possible thing because they'll be able to kill the lily uh, but they are going to have to sacrifice a good bit to do that, given we will have five damage coming in, if not more, uh, on the crackback. So that's fine by me. Awesome. Um, I'm going to blow that up. I'm going to just throw this out here, and I'm going to force the discard for both of us. So... I'll just get rid of a land here. Like I said, lands, I mean, we top out mostly at four. Um, we can obviously go further, but we don't really need to. Uh, and so lands are, at this point, kind of negligible pieces. We can throw them out if we need to. Uh, and now, at this point, this discard becomes so one-sided that it's just always going to be a benefit. We have a blocker now. Um, so I'm not terribly concerned with what the opponent's up to anymore. We also just have four points of damage to deal, and we win the game. So... 
feeling pretty good. Okay, well, that just completely threw that out the window. Uh, still not the end of the world, I guess, though. We can, we can do some things. Let's go ahead and throw this at him. We'll get to draw another little card here, which is helpful. We can start building up our board again. Uh, Infernal Grasp is not bad. Honestly, a land now would be great because we could Infernal Grasp plus Tenacious Underdog. Uh, but this is the ability of Mono Black, right? Is to be recursive and to, to hopefully solve that problem. But even if they do sweep, we can still deal damage. And thankfully, Tenacious Underdog is that solution for us. Uh, and there we go. Wow, ask and you shall receive, I suppose. Um, not a strong believer in that, but here we are. <laughs> All right, sick. Let's go ahead and see if they have a removal spell. They don't. Guys, we're two for two. We are on a roll. Let's keep it going. Let's go to game three. All right, guys, here we are for game three. Looking like a strong start. We will definitely keep this. Mono red might be the optimal <laughs> uh, opposing matchup at this point, given how much removal we have plus shield red. But uh, looks like it might be mono black as well, which is kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and throw out a misery shadow. If it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'd rather them use their removal spell on that than a shield red. Uh, so, that's fine by me. Uh, Misery Shadow is really good in the uh, mirror matchup, by the way, because it gets rid of like tenacious underdogs and things like that. So, there's a lot of benefit there. Um, I think we just hold off, right? I don't think there's a reason to do too much at the moment. I'm not throwing Liliana out into a basically open field of potential death. Uh, and so for me, I need to be able to protect Lily in, in some way. Uh, so our question is now, do we go Gix and leave up cut down? Uh, do we just throw Shieldred out there? I'm going to go Gix. I'm not 100% sure this is the right play, but Gix is enough of a threat that they're probably going to want to remove it. It doesn't, hit, like cut down doesn't work on it. So they're going to have to have more than that. Invoke Despair. One card, I'd never mention this, and that's kind of surprising. One thing we don't use in this deck is Invoke Despair, uh, which is kind of interesting, right? Like, uh, yeah, I'll throw the Evolve Sleeper out knowing that they have Invoke Despair. I think that's important. Um, that is important to note, though. We don't run the Invoke in this deck. It's much more aggressive than that. And so generally speaking... Uh, while this is obviously a very good card and a very aggressive card in some cases, uh, it's like not quite what we're trying to do, uh, which is okay, right? Like that's just the nature of the deck that we're running. Um, kind of surprised they didn't try and remove that at instant speed. Maybe they just don't have removal. All right, they have a Gix, that's fine. Awesome, uh, this is actually great. So we can cut down the Evolve Sleeper, make them sack the Yogg, moth uh praetor and yeah should be pretty good um let's do this seems easy enough uh they can't activate the foundry without tapping the foundry itself so that's helpful as well um hmm <laughs> that's actually important to note though uh so they could activate the foundry just to sack it to the lily hmm I'm gonna still force it, right? I still think this is probably the right call. We'll see if they notice the play. They didn't. Wow. Uh, interesting. <laughs> that technically would work. Uh, so for the record, uh, it takes two to activate the Mishra's Foundry. You can still tap itself to activate it, and that would have been a creature they could have sacrificed. Uh, they chose not to, which is fine by me. Um, we could have also just attacked with Shieldred, for the record, and they may not have had a great block, but uh, we now have that opportunity this turn, so that's not really a huge problem, and we start to discard cards next turn, so... Oh. <laughs> well, that's just better. Uh, Alright, so let's make sure we kill the Infernal... or uh, the uh, Gix, for sure. Also, new Gix is sick. I say new Gix. Just Gix is sick. <laughs> Uh, we'll go ahead and play that Flesh Gorger. This is just a difficult card for them to deal with. Let's make sure that we've discarded before attacking. Uh, let's also recognize that attacking with the Evolve Sleeper will most likely result in the Evolve Sleeper dying. So we're just going to attack with the Shieldred and force a potential block here. Uh, yeah. 
Looks like that's gonna be the play. That is fine by me. What's nice about this is we're getting one of the two foundries off the field, which is actually important because they stack uh, and one makes the other a 4-4, uh, which does obviously pan out quite well for a lot of our creatures. And so against a lot of our creatures, which not super stoked about. So that's fine. Uh, so do we just win? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we are killing it. Uh, was that three? Was that three undefeated? I think that was three undefeated. Guys, I like this deck. All right, let's wrap this one up. All right, guys, so I know we only got three, I think three games in, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't remember. Uh, I think we only got three games in, but I, I mean, we got them all. That was pretty awesome. Uh, I'm cutting videos a little bit short because we do have a lot of decks that we want to try because it is kind of a new standard environment. Uh, so I apologize, it's a little bit shorter, but let's talk about this for a moment. So first and foremost, not having Invoke Despair in the deck, how did we feel about it? For me, it didn't feel like I was missing too much. Uh, and that I would say is also the case through practice with the deck as well. Again, I only I only played maybe three games. I think it was only two. Uh, I did win those games and honestly, it seemed fine. Like, Invoke Despair is a great card, don't get me wrong, but when we're playing like two spells for the, the same cost, that five mana cost, and then we're able to kind of mitigate the opposing Invoke Despairs at least a little bit, feels worth it to me. Uh, now, again, this is one variation of mono black, guys, so please keep in mind, you're gonna see a lot of different versions. We were up against a different version. Uh, I would say try as many of them as you can. If you've previously built mono black for Dominaria United standard, you've got a lot of the pieces already. There's just some new stuff to try out, um, and I, I think it's a huge improvement on the deck. Unfortunately, maybe a deck that didn't necessarily need a lot of improvement. It was already sitting at the top, uh, but it still is a very good deck. So I encourage you guys, try this one out. This was a blast. Uh, I will probably revisit this deck at some point down the line with a different configuration, because again, there's a lot of different stuff I wanna try in this format. Uh, but I really do appreciate you guys watching. Again, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope you're enjoying the set. Guys, stay positive. That's the biggest thing that I can say. That's what it resolves is gonna try and do. We are going to try and stay positive throughout whatever comes, come what may, we'll, we'll deal with it. It is what it is, you know? It's still a game and we're still gonna enjoy it. So I hope you guys can find the, the positive nature in the game as well. And I hope you guys can continue to enjoy it. Uh, if not, I understand, but I love you guys very much. Thank you so much for your continued support. Good luck at the giveaway. Have a fantastic Thanksgiving this upcoming week if you are in the US and I will see you guys again very soon.